My name is Jean Matthews, and I'm a consultant doing strategy and business development work. Uh, I work with clients such as Adult Swim and Pocket God, uh, Harmonix that created Rock Band, and Play First that does Diner Dash, etc. And I'm here to talk to you about transploration, which most of you guys are scratching your head as to what that means, and truthfully, I don't really know. I just kind of made it up. But it seems today like most people are taking the word trans and sort of putting something with it to sound clever. So whether it's trans media or trans platform or microtransaction, uh, it, it seems to work. So in my mind, transploration is the idea of blending words. No, I don't know what happened there. Uh, exploring trans platform opportunities and giving you uh, transploration. So you have companies that have come out on mobile and social and console, et cetera, and they're looking at new opportunities uh, across the board. And so it seems like everyone is doing it. Uh, you have figurines, plushies, and toys, even board games. And up in the other corner there, you have even an Angry Birds cookbook. So, <laughs> right? It's crazy. The one thing to note that uh, perhaps not every deal should actually be done. And for full uh, confidentiality here, this deal has not yet been signed, so keep this between us. Uh, so let's look at what are some of the pros and cons when looking at opportunities, because there's no shortage of them. Now, the first is, as a developer, there is instant money to be had. And a lot of platforms that are new are willing to give like six figures or uh, any kind of money up front in order to build out their user base. And that can really be handsome. And as a new developer, that could be kind of a great opportunity. But your team really needs to consider, like, what happens if you migrate your players from their primary channel, let's say, like Facebook, and perhaps go with, uh, you know, a lesser known social networking site? Uh, and it sort of splits your user base. Or what happens if the game is subpar and doesn't even really pertain to the platform? Does it damage the brand uh, if the overall sales is low? So those are, those are some things to consider. Uh, also, there's this opportunity to have like a halo effect. There's sort of a splash in PR, right? What happens if we take our IP and put it onto other game platforms or create digital products like comics, et cetera? It can really help stimulate growth in some kind of franchise. Uh, but the real thing to ask yourselves as developers is, well, is this deal kind of a distraction? Like, should we be focused on our bread and butter and our core competency? Or um, like, does this take away from our own time uh, in our on our roadmap? Like, how complicated is it to do a 3DS uh, versus even Connect, like console, et cetera, versus iOS? So those are things to consider. So while it's great and it creates a franchise, it can actually have a negative impact. It's also pretty fun to have uh, gizmos and products. There's no shortage of digital games getting into consumer products. You have wearables and home decor, backpacks, et cetera. I was just at Licensing Expo, and uh, pretty much any kind of product, you name it, they're putting uh, digital IP on it. Uh, so I think some of the things that you might want to ask yourself is, does this product actually fit the brand? Or uh, like, do we really need a stuffed fruit? Come on in, everybody. It's a discount. I'm the last talker. Um, Oh, there's one more. Never mind. Somebody snuck in. Uh, or the other thing is, before just doing a merchandising deal, is ask yourself, does this impact a bigger deal? For instance, if you sign the rights to a couple toy things, will that impact your Hollywood deal? Because Hollywood studios typically want to lump in a big merchandising uh, deal as well as creating the animation. So don't just go for the sounds cool. Uh, speaking of cool, we have a lot of crossover things. I'm excited to announce that we just signed a deal that I helped with uh, with Sony Pictures Entertainment and Hotel Transylvania, which is uh, the movie that's coming out by Adam Sandler, uh, and Play First. So we're coming out with Hotel Transylvania Dash. Uh, but you guys have seen this before. There's been Angry Birds Rio and Temple Run Brave, uh, SpongeBob Dash, and Puss in Boots with Fruit Ninja, as well as Doodle Jump Hop. I actually think those are the only five that I know of, and the sixth one is the one that uh, we just signed. Um, so what you're seeing is it's kind of fun to take an original IP, kind of like the Amanji team that owns Temple Run, and they get a phone call from Disney saying, hey, 
do you guys want to make our game? And they're like, are you kidding me? Um, so to a small mom and pop team actually can really generate a lot of users. It can add credibility that, hey, we're working with Disney. Uh, and frankly, it can make a lot of money because you have an existing game and you just repurpose a little bit of the artwork, um, but yet can reap a lot of the uh, profits, right? So it's a pretty good deal other than now you got to probably share in the profits. Uh, but you can take advantage, studios are pouring in millions of dollars to launch a movie. So that's kind of nice. And as a little indie, when you're hoping to maybe spend ten or 25000 at the most on your marketing, a couple million dollars is sort of a big deal. But here are some things to consider. What happens if the movie sucks? And that impacts negatively your game and your reputation. So you have to be careful about that. The other thing is, does that film or TV really line up with the essence of the game? Does it have the same sensibilities or does it kind of rub the wrong way? There's a lot of what you call brand transfer value and the marketing people might know what that means where the game sort of takes on the value of the movie reputation and vice versa. The movie reputation takes on a little bit of the value of the game. So Angry Birds Rio uh, was a situation where they both kind of rubbed off on each other. So you need to be aware of that if one of the partners isn't uh, of the quality that you hope for. And also note that pretty much films, um, you have to be careful in that sometimes they're great and they're blockbuster and you hope you sign with that one. But as we all know, it can go a huge spike and then drop off just as fast. Um, TV properties, I would say, tend to have a little bit longer of a shelf life. Uh, but you have to be careful. Again, if you associate and come out with that game, you probably know you're going to have quick sales and then sort of like wane over time. Number five, it's always cool to have uh, like new turf and looking at new markets and territories. Everybody has their eye on China uh, with the explosion of growth there. So it might be nice to augment with a partner who knows what the hell is going on over there. Um, but there are things to consider as well is how good are they, frankly, in distributing in that territory? Do they have already evidence that they are uh, a powerhouse there? What localization efforts will they need to do? And, and will they pay for the costs, or is that part of the deal and you'll have to pay that back before earning any revenues? Um, does your game even make sense for that territory? Like, do you think they're going to like fuzzy little something or another's, or not? Does it, does it fit? Um, I'd worry a little bit about the reporting. Are they going to be transparent about it, or are they going to be in some remote country over there and you have no idea what's going on and they really never quite get back to you, et cetera? And also, watch for the Q&A. We've done deals before where we've thought, oh, this is a fantastic partner. Pretty soon, uh, my clients are sitting there on every single device doing their own testing, which is really painful because if a user has a bad game experience and they tweet about it or they blog about it, whatever it is, um, it looks bad on our brand. And so uh, when it's your baby, you really care. And like I said, my clients were on every single Android device and checking to see what is working and what's not. It was actually a really painful deal. Number six is a big one, is average gaming and sponsorships. We're all trying to look at how else to make money, whether it's in freemium, premium, what are the different business models, et cetera. And something that's really kind of working is... Uh, people are dabbling into in-game sponsorships or advert gaming or so. A company that's done really well with this is Card Town. Uh, they're a Facebook game. It's kind of nice because they have an advertising agency called C Games or uh, C Studios, and they basically have tied in like a Toyota in integrated into Car Town itself or uh, brands like NASCAR, and they've received a heavy sum of money to have these cars associate and trick out your Prius or um, go to the NASCAR track, et cetera. So that's fantastic. You see Zanga actually has hired people that in the marketing area that are focused on integrating brands. They have five different chip brands that each one of those has a QR code that gives you exclusive content into Farmville, Cityville, or Castleville. Um, so you see these brands really want to play. Uh, um, so they're doing special programs like this. The question you need to ask is, how does this impact our developers? It always kind of goes back to that. If the shortage is always the developer's time. So as a person that focuses on biz dev, 
I'm always out there trying to land, land these deals. But the real question is, can the team actually handle it? Can they eat what we've killed as a hunter? And when they can't, or if they do, but then that means they have to focus on that as opposed to the 80-20, which is gonna is your bread and butter. You have to be really careful about signing that six-figure deal, and in lieu of a million dollars of revenue, you know, on iPhone or something. Uh, also, look at is the brand really organic to the play? Does it make sense, or is it a little bit like Mark Burnett, where you have Mountain Dew in the middle of an island somewhere? in your face, it's, uh, is it organic? And, and one question to ask is, does that brand actually provide some game value? Does it, is it a better game experience because the brand was involved? So those are some of the things to consider. There are so many different deal types and nuances to the deals, um, but I thought I would just turn it over and see if there's any questions at 3.30 in the afternoon. Any questions? Bueller? Yeah, Gene, when you look at the emerging opportunities for developers, mm -hmm. do you see mobile breaking open, especially like on that last slide, once in a while, some of the other tired? Um, do I see it breaking open like a, as in more this terrible looking slide? Sorry about that. I don't yeah, know what happened. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, more to the sponsor, more to the alternate revenue sources that you can generate that uh, will build more connection to the brand. So your question is, do you see people getting into other? Well, I mean, these kinds of deals used to be like only the zings of the world you know, right. can actually go land. But now I'm seeing emerge as a much more, um, you can almost go sign up for the Yeah. Um, I definitely, I don't think every single kind of deal type matches every kind of game brand. and and. I have to be careful because I don't really know who's from what company in here, and I could give some bad examples, but I probably shouldn't. I already did, and I'm glad Rovio's not in here. Um, but I've, I mean, I've talked. I'll just say a really small developer uh, has a, a game that's trying to get off the ground, and they've got all sorts of stuff like a plushie and T-shirts and stuff, and. They're in the grocery game. Um, so it's kind of like, ah, you know, like I just don't feel like I'm going to snuggle up to my grocery bag. Um, so I just feel like just because everyone else is doing plushies doesn't mean that you should do plushies too. I think it's more important to really think about your brand and think, like, how did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles become kind of an evergreen property and not be the quick hit fix of like, hey, we're going to do cookbooks now. Um, or I've walked around and seen like a pencil with a thing on the end and you flick it and, you know, I just... Uh, there's just a lot of bad examples out there where you're going for a quick deal, but it's actually not um, good sustainable sense. Little guys can start getting into these deals. To be honest, like um, for Play First to, to do a deal with Sony Pictures Entertainment, that was huge, and, and we did it in a very fast amount of time uh, to strike that deal. But there are big studios looking for little guys. It's got to be the right uh, game and fit, uh, and, and watch out because those studios will take advantage of, of the little guys. Um, any other questions? Yeah. That's it. Great. Thanks, guys. <laughs>